Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's uh, public forum being held in the Council Chambers for this Monday, the 23rd of May at 6pm. This public forum is being audio recorded for administrative purposes. By speaking at the public forum, you agree to being recorded. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this public forum, that you are, you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this public forum. Item two, conflict of in interest declarations received. There are none. So on to item three, our speakers. 3.1, Mr. Peter O'Dwyer via Zoom, and he is speaking in, in support of Council's preferred recommendation in relation to modification to dual occupancy development at 654 Pemberton Street, Aubrey. Thank you, Mr. O'Dwyer. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I was a very late apology for the last uh, uh, council uh, meeting that considered this matter and uh, uh, so I welcome the opportunity to speak again even though uh, you know circumstances uh, uh, meant that it's, uh, it was deferred. Um, for those councillors that have uh, considered this matter before this must seem like the never-ending story but uh, for those uh, new councillors just by a very brief um, way of background um, We've got a, a situation here where a DA was uh, issued for, uh, for a dual occupancy development. The subsequent uh, construction certificate was issued, which was contrary to the DA. And then for reasons that uh, we can't uh, really put our finger on, the construction then didn't conform with the, uh, the construction certificate. So we ended up with a situation where uh, in March of uh, 2019, my clients, uh, uh, contacted council and uh, objected to the fact that uh, um, the development was occurring uh, contrary to the DA. And I need to uh, just reiterate that it was uh, as a direct result of this complaint that subsequent lodgement of modifications occurred. It wasn't uh, out of the, uh, uh, the kind heartedness of the developer to uh, improve uh, my client's amenity was previously submitted on a number of occasions. There are in excess of 40 non-compliances that affect all aspects of this building. Um, and they include um, height and uh, widths and doors and decks and, and the like. To cut to the chase, the development's over a metre higher and the entire southern elevation has moved almost a metre closer to my client's property. The main focus has been uh, at the last meeting was placed on uh, a difference between the uh, the height that the developer was prepared to reduce the building by compared to what was approved. And uh, the last meeting I understand from, uh, from uh, my investigations that there was much discussion placed on the 150 millimetre difference between the developers and the council staff's recommendation. What was missing from that focus is the fact that there still remains no uh, valid reason that's been offered as justification for the additional 1.07 metres in height. The council staff have determined that Ian Ed Lane had nothing to do with it. And the developer himself has stated in the past that an additional 500 millimetres in the first story was to create a feeling of more space or words to that effect. Over the last three years, this is the third time that the developer has stated categorically that the height reduction proposed by the developer is the largest amount possible. This would be credible if the proposed height reduction had remained the same value over, the, over that period of time. However, the so-called height reduction proposal that is um, uh, contended to be the maximum reduction possible has increased every time from 150 mil or decreased to 150 mill millimetres to 250 and now 350. And this certainly throws some doubt on the uh, credibility of the current uh, statements that 350 millimetres is, uh, which is now nominated as the maximum possible height reduction. Uh, to reiterate past submissions, my clients did nothing other than own the property next door and they've made no contribution to the additional 1.07 metres in height, yet for the sake of public interest, they are now prepared to agree with the 500 millimetre height reduction recommended in the staff report. 
We believe there's no valid reason why the developer can't consider the public interest and agree to a 500 millimetre height reduction, which incidentally remains higher than what was originally approved. My clients have said on many times that they believe that the community expectation is for the developer to build to the DA. And if they don't, they need to fix it. My clients are now prepared to accept the council officer's recommendation and they believe that the uh, 350 millimetre height reduction is not reasonable in the circumstances and that the office recommendation should be supported. Uh, just lastly, I should finally also mention that uh, this matter has been to council on uh, several previous occasions over the years and then the subsequent recommendations uh, adopted by council at those times, both at the meeting of the 25th of May 2020 and reiterated once again on the meeting of the 22nd of February 2021, are a range of enforcement conditions for uh, respect of non-compliance. I would just draw council's attention that if uh, it was of a mind at the end of the day not to accept the council officers um, recommendation, uh, which has happened in the past, that I would just uh, respectfully draw your attention to those previous conditions, which, as I understand it, uh, notwithstanding that they were resolved on two separate occasions, they still remain uh, outstanding in terms of uh, following up on, on compliance issues. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Mr O'Dwyer. Councillors, any questions for Mr O'Dwyer? Okay, thank you very much. Item 3.2, our next speaker, Catherine Goodall. It is uh, in relation to the provision of shade at Albury City Playgrounds, and Ms Goodall is speaking in support of Council's preferred recommendation. Welcome tonight, Ms Goodall. Oh, good evening. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you, Madam Mayor, and to the Albury City Council for allowing me the opportunity to provide some additional information in supporting um, in support of implementing the shade across the playground areas of your region and to play some part in working towards reducing rates of skin cancer and melanoma across our state. So I'm the Community Program Coordinator at Cancer Council New South Wales and I work across the Albury border region to improve community awareness on cancer prevention as well as the various supports and programs that we offer to people living with cancer. So firstly, I'd like to commend you on the work that you've done to date to audit the areas across your council um, area and encourage you to consider the implementation plan of these much needed improvements to our play areas. Cancer Council is an evidence-based agency that has a lead role in skin cancer prevention by influencing policy and practices that improve awareness and change social norms. We partner closely with all tiers of government to achieve, to achieve these strategic goals. So we've been working with local councils across New South Wales for several years, most recently to provide information to support awareness and advocate uh, for increasing access to shade um, and to support in local strategic planning shapements and to work with the local councils who are planting trees to address things such as heat mitigation and reducing the experience of heat and protecting all of those people who use our priority public spaces from solar UV radiation in these areas. So my comments tonight are being made in the context of designing public, healthy public places. Unfortunately, Australia is the skin capital of the world. This is because we have the highest UV radiation levels. UV, UV radiation is a group one carcinogen rated in the same way as tobacco use and asbestos exposure. UV radiation causes 95% of melanomas and 99% of non-melanoma skin cancers in Australia. And sun protection is not just about the three months of summer. Uh, the UV is high enough in Aubrey to damage unprotected skin 10 months of the year. The good news, however, is that skin cancer is highly preventable. And when we protect our skin, we significantly reduce our cancer risk. UV exposure in childhood increases skin cancer risk later in life. And we know that children receive greater amounts of exposure to UV compared to adults. So moving to quality shade is effective and can reduce UV exposure by up to 75%. So well-designed shade provides protection from both direct UV from the sun, but also reflected UV from surfaces such as water. And shade is an effective and proven health and safety solution. Our play spaces, play spaces have an important role in keeping our community active, and it's important to ensure that they're well shaded to increase the usability at all times of the year. The council has a duty of care to look after all our community members, particularly children's areas. 
So quality shade is an asset that is critical to ensuring the health and well-being of the community. Whilst we recognise the need to balance elements such as design and budget, failure to provide appropriate shade for children and the wider community is a core safety issue. We know that when shade is provided, people will use it. However, most frequently, the, pre the key problem is insufficient access to shade in the ripe spaces. There are many benefits to our community to have quality and green quality shade and green spaces in our community. The key health benefit that I'm speaking to tonight is the reduction of the UV exposure and therefore the reduced risk of developing skin cancer. However, other health benefits come from the cooling effect in hot weather, allowing for an increase in physical activity that reduces chronic diseases and improves mental health and well-being right across our community. And aside from this, there's a, ver a variety of environmental and social benefits as well. So one of our key priorities for Cancer Council, New South Wales, is a commitment to skin cancer prevention. The provision of quality shade in key locations plays a critical role in reducing the risk of skin cancer. Having quality shade in playgrounds plays a vital role in protecting the community of Albury from overexposure to UV radiation. And so for these reasons, Cancer Council New South Wales is proud to speak in favour of the recommendation that Albury City Council receive and note the contents of your recent report, is able to allocate the 261,000 per annum in years one to four um, over a four year delivery, as well as initiating the 11 place based master plan projected identified in the shade audit and submits the council consideration across that, that four year program. This program um, presents a real opportunity for Albury Council to be a leader when it comes to shade provision and sun safety in playgrounds. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goodall. Any one, any councillor have a question at all for Ms. Goodall in wake of that presentation? Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. Um, thank you, Catherine, for coming along tonight. Just had a question about what other um, comparable councils might be doing in this space. Um, we know that Aub the Wagga are a little bit behind um, Albury City Council. We know that they're in the process of um, moving towards having an audit done across their, um, their region. Um, I can get some additional information um, to you, but I'm just not sure at the moment. We've been working closely with a variety of ones outside of our Western region. Um, so I'm just unable to name them, but I know there's quite a few happening across this, the Sydney region. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillors, any other questions from anyone else? In that case, Ms. Goodall, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the council meeting held in the council chambers for Monday the 23rd of May at 6pm. Uh, we'll start off with the opening affirmation and acknowledgement of country, CM1, uh, to be delivered by Councillor Baker. To represent the people of Albury who have entrusted us with this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, wisdom and common sense. May our personal values give us honesty and courage to serve our community effectively and with respect for all. I would like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet upon today and pay my respects to the elders past, present and future, for they hold the memories, culture, tradition and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that contribute to our community. This council meeting is being webcast and recorded. By speaking at the council meeting, you agree to being recorded and webcast. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this council meeting that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this council meeting. An audio recording will be made for administrative purposes. Okay, councillors, item CM3, conflict of interest declarations received by the chair and disclosure of political donations, Mr CEO. 
Thank you, Mayor King. Uh, no conflict of interest declarations received for this evening, um, but the advice to the council meeting relating to the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act and political donations disclosure uh, indicates that section 10.4 requires a person submitting a planning application or submission regarding a planning application to disclose any reportable political donation and or gifts to any local councillor or employee of the council. Reportable political donations include those of or above $1,000. The disclosure statement forms are available on council's website or from the customer service centre and must be lodged in accordance with the Act. In dealing with development applications, councillors need to take into account specific planning matters contained in the Act. Accordingly, the provisions of section 4.151 of that Act are set out in the council officer's report detailing planning issues to be considered. The Local Government Act section 375A requires that a division be called whenever a motion for a planning decision is put at a meeting of the council. Planning decision means a decision made in the exercise of a function of council under the Act, including a decision relating to a development application, an environmental planning instrument, a development control plan or a development contributions plan under that act, but not including the making of an order under division 9.3 part nine of that act. Thank you, Mayor King. Thank you very much. Item 4.1, apologies, there are none. CM 4.2, attendance by councillors at a meeting by audio visual link. Do we have someone to move this please? Councillor Glacken. Thank you. To uh, move the recommendation as a motion uh, that council receives notes and accept the attendance of councillors Cameron and Thurley uh, via audio visual link uh, Zoom uh, for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Callahan. Thank you, Mayor King. Happy to second the motion. Thank you. Uh, given it's procedural, happy for those um, to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM5, Merrill Minute. There is none. CM6, Action Plans. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Through you to move the recommendation as a motion. Uh, and I intend to move all uh, together, uh, that the following action plans be received and noted. Uh, one, actions complete for noting only. Uh, two, actions awaiting responses from external parties. Three, actions in progress. And four, long-term issues more than three months, uh, so long as the other councillors are happy for me to do that in a block. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Betteridge. Thank you, Mayor King. I'm happy to second the motion. Do you wish to speak to the motion or councillors happy for us to put the motion? Or Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to that at all? Uh, no, not to speak to, just um, if there's no questions, I'm happy not to speak, yeah. No questions or comments? Happy to put the motion, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM7, confirmation of minutes of previous meetings. CM7.1, minutes of the council meeting held on Monday the 9th of May, 2022 at 6.38 p.m. Councillor Betridge. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to move that the minutes of the council meeting held on Monday the 9th of May, 2022 at 6.38 be confirmed. Thank you. Councillor Bowen. I'd like to uh, confirm that or second that. Councillor Betridge, do you wish to speak to that or happy to no, put it to you. a vote? For procedural purposes, if there's no uh, questions or councillors, we're happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you. CM8 reports from community forums. There were none. There are none. CM9 notices of motion, notices of rescission. There are none. CM10. 10 presentations and deputations, there are none. CM11 reports on minutes of committees and working parties. CM11.1 minutes of the Sustainability Advisory Committee meeting held on Monday, the 11th of April, 2022. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council receives notes and accepts the minutes and recommendations of the Sustainability Advisory Committee meeting 
held on Monday, the 11th of April, 2022. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion making. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, very briefly, just to note what a fantastic new um, SAC we have. The level of community interest has just been incredible and we have a very engaged and very um, committed team. So I'm really looking forward to the next um, iteration of this committee. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Any other speakers for or against the motion in that case? Happy to put the motion, those for, those against? The motion is carried, thank you. Item CM 11.2, Minutes of the Local Traffic Committee meeting held on Thursday, the 21st of April, 2022. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Through you, to move the recommendation as a motion uh, that Council receives notes and accepts the minutes uh, recommendations of the Local Traffic Committee meeting held on Thursday, 21 April 2022. Thank you. Councillor Baker. Second the motion making. Thank you. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? I, a couple of points. It's a fabulous committee. Um, taking forward a number uh, of initiatives uh, in conjunction uh, with the police and RMS. So it's um, really productive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any other comments or questions, councillors? If you're happy for me to put the motion, we'll put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Item CM12, documents for sealing. There are none. CM13, officers' reports for consideration. We have item 13.1, development application 10.2018.3593.2.4, modification to dual occupancy development, two lot Torrens title subdivision, boundary adjustment and consolidation, 654 Pemberton Street, Aubrey. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. To um, through you to move the recommendation uh, as printed uh, in our papers tonight uh, as the motion uh, that Council A receives and notes the contents of this report and B agrees to modify the approved development as shown in the attached amended plans and as described in the additional information provided and grants consent to development application number 10.2018. .3593.2.4 for dual occupancy development. One, uh, brackets one, additional residence, garage and studio. Two, brackets two, uh, lot Torrens title subdivision boundary adjustment and consolidation of lots one and two, DP726722 and lot one, DP16443, subject to the modified uh, and additional uh, conditions detailed in the attached draft modified development consent. Thank you. Do we have a second? A Councillor Betridge. You may, King. I'd like to second the motion. Thank you. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, actually, I will hold my right of, reserve my right of reply um, and perhaps there may be some questions, um, but I'm also um, keen to uh, double check with the staff that there's no further updates that we need to be made aware of. Noted. Councillors, any speakers for or against? All questions? In that case, Councillor Glacken, do you wish to sum up or ask a question? Um, thank you. I... Uh, have read a couple of uh, emails very late this afternoon. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm up to date and as long as everyone, all the other councillors are, then that's, that's fabulous. Um, this is something that uh, as we've um, been reminded of uh, tonight of, by one of the speakers, uh, this is something that has been ongoing for a number of years um, and has taken significant time and effort uh, of uh, council's staff, uh, the people undertaking the development, but also uh, the neighbours, uh, and it is something that has continued uh, to um, play out over a period of time, and I, I'm very conscious of the fact that uh, it makes it difficult for uh, the people who live uh, in that vicinity, including uh, the people who are undertaking the development as well as uh, the neighbours. Uh, ongoing building works over an extended period of time uh, is quite disruptive uh, for that building work uh, to have um, uh, stalled uh, for appropriate reasons um, 
for a significant period of time makes it even more difficult for everyone concerned. And I'm uh, conscious of that. Um, I believe that um, other than uh, determining or making a determination uh, that the building needs uh, would or might have needed uh, to be uh, taken back to what was originally approved. I think this is a good uh, and reasonable compromise. Um, it's good that the um, neighbour, um, and we heard from her representative this evening, uh, has accepted that this is a this is a good working way forward uh, to enable the building uh, to be completed. Uh, and so I I think uh, this is a a, a good outcome. It's not what either of the two parties actually wanted, clearly, uh, and it's not was what was originally uh, agreed and given a development app, granted a development application for originally. Uh, so really, um, it is a compromise all around, but it's a relatively uh, good compromise as far as I'm concerned. So I'm very happy to support this tonight, and I uh, thank the staff uh, for continuing to work uh, towards reaching an amicable outcome or as amicable as possible for everyone concerned. Thank you. Thank you for summing up debate there, councillors. We're now in uh, the process of um, declaring for and against uh, in division. So councillors, though, as we put the motion, those for, Councillor Thurley, Councillor Callaghan, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Bowen, Councillor King, Councillor Betteridge, Councillor Glacken, Councillor Baker, those against? Councillor Cameron. Thank you, councillors. The motion is carried. Item 13.2, new public amenities at National Foresters Grove, contract number 22 slash 00791. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Through you, um, Madam Mayor, to move the recommendation as a motion uh, that Council accepts the tender from Adaptive Training Proprietary Limited for the lump sum of contract number uh, 22, I'll start reading this one slightly less fuzzy with glasses on, 22 slash 00791 for the construction of public amenities at National Foresters Grove for the contract value of $516,604, uh, including GST. Councillor Callaghan. Happy to second making. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to open debate? Um, yes, if I could just say a couple of things. Um, I acknowledge that there was really um, uh, essentially only one tender. Uh, however, that uh, the value of, of that tender is uh, in alignment uh, with council's expectations and, and budgetary requirements. Uh, Forester's Grove is, as we know, uh, out along the uh, old Hume Highway, uh, out through uh, the top end of, of Albury and is in an ideal location to be able to provide such amenities uh, and facilities. So I think it's uh, a great opportunity to move forward uh, with this uh, and I support the recommendation uh, and the report provided to us by the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, uh, questions or speakers for or against? Daryl, Councillor Betteridge. <laughs> Thank you, Meg King. Um, I have a question in regards to the expectations and budgetary perusal of this. Now, I'm, I'm looking at page 58 of my report and I'm reading that the budget allocation for public toilet upgrades in 2022-23 is 550K, including GST. Now, that then kind of confuses me because I jump back to page 56 of my report and I'm reading that council has, if I'll just bear with me for one second to find it, it's a third paragraph down. Albury City has an allocated project budget of 165k, including GST, with noted 150k grant from local roads and community infrastructure, which is great. So my math tells me, has council allocated in its budget $315,000 for this installation, yet it's going to cost $516,600? Is that a budgetary overrun because I just didn't find the report 
to be clear and concise. I'm thinking, are we allowing $550,000 for the amenities across the city for the year? So I just needed some clarification, even though I strongly support the piece of infrastructure we're putting in. It was just an inquiry. Mr. Millett. Thank you for the question and through you, Mayor King. Um, yes, apologies for the, um, I uh, can accept that there was, wasn't clear within the report. So this project began as a toilet replacement project. Uh, the 165 in the 2122 budget was the allocation with $150 additional grant funding. So yes, um, with the inclusion of adult change facilities within that, um, that put the budget up to 75 to 100,000 in addition. Um, with the increase that we've talked about in uh, provision of sort of contracts at the moment, sort of 30% increase in delivery of these pro programs, um, we decided to push back this project to 22-23, which is the 550 allocation. So the 21-22 had the budget that was allocated in the previous financial year, which is our current year. But as we're not delivering it until 22-23, the 22-23 allocation of 550, and that's um, we're content that is value for money. Okay. Thank you very much for that. It's a little bit clear. I was just a little bit confused, and I thought I'd just ask that question. Thank yep. you for the Thank clarification. You. Thank you. Councillors, uh, any questions or speakers for or against? The motion. Councillor Glacken, in that case, do you wish to sum up debate? Uh, yes, and I uh, do appreciate the, um, the need for the clarification because we do refer to a couple of different financial years in the report, a couple of fin different financial years are re referred to in the report. Uh, so thank you for the clarification. Um, this is important infrastructure and as uh, has been uh, highlighted again this evening, uh, it includes uh, facilities for um, people who are travelling into Albury or travelling through Albury, so the adult change facilities. Um, it is imperative for many uh, families uh, uh, and groups of people <clears throat> who travel uh, to be able to access uh, adult change facilities, uh, and this is a fabulous addition uh, to the public amenities that we do have in Albury. Uh, this is uh, a very tailored um, area uh, in provision of facilities and it's really positive that we're able to uh, bring this uh, and it's disappointing we weren't able to do it previously uh, but it's fabulous we're now able to proceed with it thank you thank you happy to put the motion councillors those for those against the motion is carried Item 13.3, Ian Barker Field Stabilisation and Reconstruction Works, contract number 22-02546. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. To move the recommendation as a motion um, that council accepts the tender from Colin Joss and Company Propriety Limited trading as Joss Construction for the contract number uh, 21 slash 02546 Ian Barker Fields sub, uh, Stabilization and Reconstruction Works for the lump sum price of $4,741,657.62, including GST. Councillor Bowen. Uh, I'd like to second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, very uh, briefly. Uh, again, um, we've uh, um, been presented uh, with a report that has one tender, um, but uh, thankfully, again, uh, the tender is in within the budget uh, parameters as expected by council, which is very good. Um, clearly, uh, uh, the staff believe that it's fine to have the one uh, tenderer and to move forward with that. Uh, they've uh, undertaken the due diligence work to ensure that we will get a good result with this. Um, the project is very important. That part uh, of town or around that area of, of town um, has had various previous lives. Uh, and so it's important to uh, ensure that uh, the, the, um, the fields are flat. Uh, at the moment, there's been a little bit of a shift 
um, in those fields. And so this will bring those back up to standard and they will provide a fabulous facility for our regional community into the future. It's a fabulous precinct uh, out there in that uh, part of town. Lots of um, play spaces around there. We've got uh, the, the athletics area. We've got the um, uh, Lauren Jackson Stadium. Uh, it's a very good part of uh, town for sporting facilities. Uh, and this will uh, be really well received by the community that utilise those spaces on a very regular basis. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Baker, a question? Or a Thank comment? you. Yes, through you, Mayor King, to the most appropriate member of staff. Because this is over the top of a previous landfill site, how confident are we that there won't be any more subsiding into the future? Because yeah, I'd just like to know how it long-term will look. Mr. Lawson? Thank you. Just get the microphone sorted for you there. Apologies. Thank, thanks for the question through you, Mayor King. Uh, yeah, look, we are um, relatively confident that the works will um, sustain across a period of time. Um, the work's been designed by specialists in their field with um, geotechnical information being provided to, to support that. So, and, and also the, the contractors involved are specialist contractors in compaction fields. So. Uh, yeah, if I could ask a follow-up question, what, what if it doesn't work out, say 10 years time, and who, who bears the cost of, of that? Yeah, thank you for the follow-up question through you, Mayor King. Um, over that period, council would bear the any any um, costs for that if if the works didn't stand up um, due to the time lapse um, from the construction period. Any other questions or speakers for or against? Councillor Glacken. A question, if I may. Thank you. Um, through you to the most relevant member of staff. Um, can I um, get an idea as to what the warranty period would be, noting that Councillor Baker asked a question about in 10 years' time? Um, could you explain what the warranty period might be? Mr Lawson? Yeah, again, thanks for the question through you, Mayor King. The um, standard defect period for any of our contracts is 12-month period. Thank you. Uh, can I have a follow-up? Thank Absolutely. you. Um, and I should have said I had two questions. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, the other question I want to ask was, I'm uh, aware that about eight or 10 years ago, uh, similar work was undertaken, uh, re-stabilisation of other sporting facilities um, in, in Albury City. Uh, and that was a second go. This is a second go at uh, flattening uh, an area. How successful has the other works uh, that was undertaken probably, yeah, probably about eight to 10 years ago. Mr Lawson? Yeah, thank you for the question and through you, Mackie, again. Um, I'm assuming you're uh, talking about the Lavington Sports Ground? No. No? J.C. Uh, King. J.C. King, apologies. Um, my understanding is that work has um, stood the test of time. Um, however, I could defer to Dave Costello if... Yeah, so look, we, we, we might, we could take that on notice. We, we haven't had received any complaints and our understanding is that the, the field has stood the test of time. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments or speakers for or against? Councillor Glacken, do you wish to close debate? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, this is an important part of the um, recreation facilities, sport and recreation facilities that we uh, offer our community and the region, very much the regional community. Uh, it is not uh, dissimilar to a number of other areas that have previously been used or had, have had different lives uh, and have required remediation uh, some years after the initial work has been undertaken. Um, I am confident that uh, the work um, this further work will enhance uh, those fields and will take them well into the future. Uh, and it's a great uh, way for us to be able to reutilise um, space um, in, in give them a second uh, life. So I think it's a, a good opportunity for us to progress this. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Glack. And we'll now put the motion. Councillors, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Councillor Furley, the screen has um, frozen though. Could we just double check that his confirmation? We might just pause while we await. Councillor Thurley, can you hear me? Just to clarify for those who may be uh, viewing this, we are just uh, awaiting contact with Councillor Thurley via Zoom. So just um, bear with us for a moment, please. We'll just note that Councillor Thurley is no longer with us on Zoom at the moment. Uh, he will try to reconnect. Yes, I believe Councillor Cameron's still there. He may have just taken himself off screen at the moment. So if Councillor Cameron... He's happy to indicate that he's there. Thanks, Councillor Cameron. So, yeah, just noting that Councillor Thurley is uh, not with us at the moment and we will keep an eye on his return and speak accordingly. So confirming that um, item 13.3 is carried. Our next item, 13.4, provision of shade at Albury City Playgrounds. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Making. I move that Council A receives and notes the contents of the report B allocates $261,725 per annum in years one to four of the draft 2022-23 four-year delivery program and C initiates the 11 place-based master plan projects identified in the shade audit and submits for council consideration throughout the four-year delivery program. Councillor Bowen. Very happy to second that motion making. Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, please. Um, playgrounds are vital to our city um, and not just my family. During uh, recent COVID times, they provided entertainment and a break from home for families. They're free and accessible to all, uh, but they don't all have quality shade or any shade at all, as the audit um, has revealed. Uh, this recommendation will expand the use of our playgrounds over the warmer months, providing added opportunities for play, exercise and improved mental health for our children in this city and their parents and carers. This recommendation also represents a significant investment in the long-term health of our community. Our city has high rates of skin cancer caused by UV exposure. And as outlined by Ms Goodall from the Cancer Council, the costs of inaction to our community are high. This is an opportunity to lead the way on initiatives to increase shade and reduce cancer in our community, therefore reducing the costs of treatment and care and ultimately sparing lives and suffering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaking for Councillor Baker. 
Thank you. I'd like to support the recommendation and also make a point or ask a question. Um, did the shade audit look into our swimming facilities? Because a lot of people go to those as well and they're very inadequate in that area. So I just wondered if uh, there's a specific uh, pool shade policy. Mr. Costello. Thanks very much for the question uh, and through you, Mayor King. Um, the, the shade order itself looked primarily at the general playgrounds throughout the, throughout the, pre, uh, throughout the city, um, so with no emphasis on, on the pools. Um, that being said, the pool shade could certainly be addressed through the master planning associated with the, the pool facilities, um, so it's certainly one that could, could be done uh, as required through those planning processes for the swim centres. Just noting that Councillor Thurley has returned to the meeting. Um, any follow-up at all, Councillor Baker? Yep. Thank you. Yes. Oh, there was a follow-up question, sorry. Not, re not really. I think it's, it's been answered, but, you know, that's where you've got often not, met, not a great amount of clothes on, and it's, it's just as critical as the, the land-based um, playgrounds. Thank you but I, I'm supporting the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, speaker for Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd also like to support the recommendation from Council and also from uh, from Ashley and also Stuart Baker. I think if I could, uh, from Councillor Baker, also endorse that, that uh, we do something from a master plan point of view for the uh, shade of the pool area would be a, a great addition. So through to, uh, that would be an excellent idea. Uh, for one who's, uh, and this isn't about just children either in playgrounds. This is about everybody. Uh, and so uh, it's it's a really important process. Uh, I'll be going for a skin cancer removal next week. Uh, so even uh, at whatever age you are, taking children or out indoors, it's a, it's a very important thing to have shade. So, uh, yeah, I fully support this. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor Edwards, do you wish to close debate? Uh, yes, I just urge other councillors to support this recommendation and uphold our commitment to being a leading council. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Happy to put the motion now. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Item 13.5, the March quarter budget review. Do we have a councillor happy to put that motion? Councillor Callaghan. Okay. That council receives and adopts the revised budget estimates for the 2021-2022 financial year and authorises the drawdown of $12,982,000 in budgeted loans during the 2021-22 financial year. Councillor Betteridge. Through the Mayor King, I'd be happy to second the motion. Councillor Callaghan, would you like to open debate? Councillors, any speakers for or against? In that case, we'll... Oh, sorry, Councillor Edwards, I've missed you there. Okay. Accidental, yep. sorry. Okay. Councillors, happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Item 13.6, draft councillor expenses and facilities policy. Councillor Betteridge. Through you, Mayor King, I'd like to move that Council A resolves that councillors will be entitled to superannuation contribution payments in line with the Commonwealth Superannuation Guarantee, brackets Administration Act 1992, as of the 1st of July 2022 and B endorses the draft revised councillor's payment of expenses and provision of facilities policy for public exhibition for 28 days. And if no submissions are received during the public exhibition period, adopts the policy. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mayor King. Thank you. Councillor Betteridge, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor King. Any other speakers for or against? In that case, we'll put, sorry, Councillor Edwards. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Making. Um, I just wanted to note that I'm really excited about um, seeing the inclusion of super for counsellors, uh, which will make uh, the opportunity to become a counsellor more um, equitable, I suppose, to, um, to all, particularly women and young people. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Edwards. We'll put the motion now. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. Item 13.7, Community and Cultural Grants, Round 2, 2021-22. Councillor Thurley, thank you. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council A receives and notes the report and B endorses the recommended 2021-2022 Community and Cultural Grant Program Round 2 allocations as follows. One, Filipino Australian Community of Old Yodonga, Fiesta Filipina, 2022, $2,500. Murray Conservatorium Music for Wellbeing, $3,000. Mercy Connect, Mercy Connect Podcast, $750. Bricks on the Border, Brickmaster, 2022, $3,000. Swim Tech Refugee Swim Lesson Appeal, $3,000. Starts, Aubrey Yodonga African Festival, $3,000. Andy Edna Stewart, Diriar Malang, Elders Group Community Cultural Exchange Program, $5,000. Uh, eight, Albury Wodonga Theatre Company Access to the Arts for Low SEO Schools, $3,000. Nine, Albury Wodonga Volunteer Resource Bureau Multicultural Community Lunch, $3,000. Ten, Bhutanese Australia Community Support Group, Albury Wodonga Seniors and Women's Capability Building Project, $2022, $2,040. 11, Albury Wodonga Aboriginal Health Service, Jakamia, caretaker of pregnancy and birth during $1,000, total $29,290. I think, is that all there is to the motion? Just after a seconder, thank you. Councillor Bowen. Happy to second that motion, Mayor King. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, as always, we got an enormous number of applications from a great um, group of um, number of community organisations. And those who didn't get uh, funded should not think that we didn't think the project was worthwhile. It's just that we had a uh, limited amount of funds and way over um, that amount of applications. So we, we tried our best to, um, over two sessions, to um, pick the best ones. And I hope that's what we've got here. Um, I'd encourage those who were not supported to look to the future. Some of the projects were to be done over a couple of years. So if you didn't get it this time, come back to us next time uh, and have another go. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Any other speakers for or against or questions? Councillor Thurley, do you wish to sum up before we put the motion? No, thank you, Megan. In that case, we'll put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. CM14, officers reports for noting. CM14.1, investment balances, April 2022. <coughs> Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that the council receives and notes the investment balances report for the month of April 2022. After a seconder, Councillor Glacken. I have your second. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Callaghan, did you wish to speak to that at all? No, thank you, Mickey. Any other speakers for, against, or questions, councillors? And happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Item 14.2, Operational Plan Quarterly Progress Report, March 2022. Councillor Betteridge. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to move that the Council receives and notes the Operational Plan Progress Report, March 2022. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion in making. Councillor Betteridge, do you, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor King. Any speakers for or against? No need to sum up, Councillor Bittridge, happy to put the motion. Oh, Those happy. for? Those against? The motion's carried. 
Item 14.3, Corporate Success Pillars Quarterly Update for March 2022. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to recommend that the Council receives and notes the quarterly Corporate Success Pillar scorecard of March 2022. Councillor Callaghan. Happy to second, Mayor King. Thank you. Councillor Bowen, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? No, thank you, Mayor King. Any speakers for or against? Happy to put the motion? Okay, put the motion, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item 14.4, Aubrey Wodonga Visitor Economy Trends Report for 2021. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to move that the Council receives and notes the 2021 Aubrey Wodonga Visitor Economy Trends Report. Councillor Betteridge. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd be happy to second that motion. Councillor Callaghan, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Mayor King. Councillors, any uh, comments, questions or debate or speakers for or against? Councillor Callaghan, you happy to put the motion? Councillors, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. CM15, delegates reports for noting. There are none. CM16, notice of urgent business. Councillors, any urgent business? Councillors, our next item is CM17, Confidential Matters. So, Councillor Glacken is happy to take happy this to one. Happy to move uh, this recommendation, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, through you to move the recommendation that council, here we go, um, uh, that council move into confidential to discuss item CM 17.1 as a co confidential item exclusive of the press or public on the grounds that A, uh, sorry, two, the matters and information are the following, A, personal matters uh, concerning particular individuals other than councillors and D, uh, commercial information on a confidential of a confidential nature that would, if disclosed, prejudice the commercial uh, position of the person who supplied it, or confer a commercial advantage on a competitor of the council, or reveal a trade secret. Uh, and this is with reference to Local Government Act 1993, Number 30, Section 10, A, 2, A, and 2, D, uh, 1, 2, and 3 as Roman numerals. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. I'd like to second that motion. We move to confidential. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. No, strange. Yep. Perfect. Just uh, noting if there are any uh, statements or submissions from the public regarding the reasons as identified for this confidential item CM seventeen point one. There are none. Councillors, do you wish to proceed with the motion to move into confidential? Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. The motion to move into confidential has now been carried. For our live stream viewers, we will now say goodbye. You can find the outcome of this confidential session in the meeting minutes, which are published on the Albury City website within two business days.